Hi guys, I got another video. Okay, I'm done. And then I got another video. Nah. Okay, I'm not. I'm done. Okay. I'm just playing around. It's been a good day. Like, uh, you know, OG rapper Ice Cube. It's been a good day. Thank you, Father. Blessings, corrections, pauses. Um, just kind of reminds me of that little uh, uh, childhood kindergarten game where red light, green light, you know. And sometimes he pauses us. Sometimes go, go, go. You know. And there's things that happen beyond our control. But he's in control. So. Um, this is in the book of Revelations, chapter 6, when the Lamb opens the seals. So, what I was reading was chapter 6, verse 2. And during the day, as I'm doing my things and I'm talking and praying to God, and, you know, it popped into my head. And I'm like... What? What? Crown and a bow. A crown and a bow? Okay. So I pondered on it all day long. Just actually for a couple days. Um, I'm going to read it. And some people say the rider on the white horse is Antichrist. And some say, no, it's Jesus because he's a slaughtering king. Um, but these two things kind of, um, didn't make sense until I got those two words. So, with no f more further ado, I say, in order to understand, you must always kind of go back a little bit. And what do I mean? Um... <clears throat> well, it's uh, Revelations chapter 5, verse 5, 55, to get some context, right? But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the Lamb of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scrolls and to loosen the seven seals. Okay. Jump down to Revelations 5, 9. And they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open the seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Out of every tribe, out of every tongue, out of every people, and every nation. And a nation isn't a country. A nation is a, a race. Okay? And when I figured that out, it's like, oh, because Matthew 24, kingdom against kingdom and nation against na nation. And I'm like, aren't they the same thing? No, they're not. Kingdoms are a graphic, graphic area, and a nation is a group of people. Like uh, uh, the Kurds live in Iraq. But there's other people that are Iraqis that are not Kurds, right? Just like in America. We have the American Indian. Then we have everybody else, right? They're a nation. And they're called the Nation of 500 or 500 Nation. Anyways, I digress. Um, so it goes on. It says, out of every tribe, every nation, every people, right? Every tongue and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on earth. Well, who's worthy to open the scrolls? He was slain. By his blood, we were redeemed back to Father God. And he's going to make us kings and priests, and we get to reign on earth. We also get to judge angels. Okay, so that's the context of who is worthy to open the scrolls. Because... The Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, right? Uh, John 3.16. <clears throat> so, we know that 
The one opening the seals is the Lamb, and the Lamb is Yeshua. That's Jesus. Okay? So, as I'm looking, we'll go back to now Revelation 6, verse 1. Now I saw when the Lamb, who's that? Right, that's Yeshua. That's Jesus opening the, the scrolls. I saw the Lamb open one of the seals. There's one, right? And I heard one of the four living creatures say with a voice of thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him. And he went out conquering and to conquer. Now I, I checked the Greek. And it says, he went out to overcoming and to overcome. Kind of a little different context in the Greek, you know, because you can be overcome by uh, military. You can be overcome by sickness and disease. You can be overcome by um, uh, financial, right? Economic. And you can also be overcome by natural disasters. Okay, so then I read this, and I went, he gets a bow, and he has a crown. Okay, a crown means authority, and a bow, um, I'm thinking, you know, for a long time I'm thinking, this is a bow and arrow. And then I'm reading, wait, 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 wait. He has no arrows. He has a bow. He has a crown. So... How do I know this distinction? Um, well, Matthew 24, verse uh, 4, I think it is. Um, yeah, for many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah. They will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and threats of wars, but do not panic, right? So there's going to be imposters or false messiahs, false Christ. Um, <clears throat> and the, the thing that I see going on is the people in power create a problem, and then the, the mass people go, save us, right, from this problem you created but they won't say they created it. It's an act of God or whatever else, right? And so then they come up with their solution um, to manipulate the people. The Hegelian dialect or something like that? Anyways, so what I saw was that, okay, this conquering person, and right after it, what's the second seal? Granted to take peace and that they should have a great sword killing each other. It's war, right? The red horse, right? First one was white, the second one is red, right? And it says it in Revelation 6, verse 4. And another horse, fiery red, went out and was granted him to take peace from the earth. Well, if you're taking peace, that means war. Okay. So we know that there's going to be false Christ, right? And then comes war. We're seeing it right here. It follows the same pattern. Um, <clears throat> so then I'm like, what is the uh, the description of the slaughtering king, right? And that's in Psalms 45. I'll wait till you get there, okay? Um, all right. And um, this is kind of a description. Uh, a little different than most people think of the the Messiah. Put on your sword. This is a 40, Psalm 45, 3. Put on your storm, O mighty warrior. You are glorious and majestic. In your majesty, ride out in victory, defending truth, humility, and justice. Go forth performing awe-inspiring deeds. And then it says, Your arrows are sharp, piercing the enemy's hearts. The nations fall be beneath your feet. Your throne, O God, endures forever and ever. Right? And also, 
talks in another book, I think Isaiah or Ezekiel, where his arrows go out as shining spears and and uh, slaughter the... Sorry, excuse me. Thank you, Father. Um, <clears throat> so there's two... There's. We can see that Jesus being the slaughtering king, destroying evil, well, if he's destroying evil, why would war, the red horse, follow him? Right? Now, granted, I've come to to look at this a lot, and um, God uses his earth to punish or to correct or to discipline Israel or um, Judah and also some other nations too. You know, when they're doing, when they're being disobedient, he does his correction thing. Um, but he can also use uh, armies or other people or other nations <clears throat> like uh, Israel uh, started worshipping idols and Babylon came and destroyed them. Or the Assyrians came and destroyed them. You know, um, the Egyptians came and destroyed them. You know, they were taken captive in Israel for centuries. Because they were always disobedient, uh, worshipping false gods, you know, hard-headed and stubborn. But God still, in his loving way, corrects them, you know. Um, so now, for the crown and the bow. I went back, because immediately I saw it. I thought, oh my gosh, the bow? First, crown in Spanish is corona, right? It's not the beer, but, right? So I'm thinking, wow. What have we had for the last three years? Um, uh huh. And has it conquered the whole world? Yes. Okay. Because I look at this, I'm like, there's countries, or there's people, or there's nations, right, or kingdoms, that do not get along. Uh, you can look to the Middle East and see that they have generational fighting. It's like the Hatfields and McCoys. It's like, why are you fighting? I don't know, but my dad did it, and my uncle did it, and my great-grandpa did it, and we've been fighting ever since, you know, I was little. Sometimes they you forget why they're still pissed off at each other. But I hate you because you did something. And then you did something to me, so I'll do something to you and retaliate. And then, oh, because I retaliate, you're going to do something to me. This endless cycle, right, of hatred, enmity. Now, that... You can see in Genesis where God says the woman's punishment or the Satan's punishment is putting enmity between him and the woman. And then you can see Abraham and Isaac. And Isaac is a chosen one, but um, Ishmael, uh, the Egyptian handmaid of Sarah, you know, there was enmity between them. And they were nations, right? From Jacob becomes Israel. And Ishmael comes to the Arab nations. And yeah, it's designed this way. So let's get back to the point. You know, so we have this event that's conquered the whole world. And what, what was I meaning? The, all these countries were all in it together. How, how can you be all in it together? These guys hate each other, right? But they're all going to fall down under a uh, a blanket of, you know, whoever, whatever, I mean, uh, you know, who says so, <clears throat> right? So we know it's more than just, you know, a small little thing that all these countries decide to just go, nope, stop, time out, lock it all down. No, you can't. No, you can't. No, you can't. Okay? So that means Satan, who's in control of this world, you know, got the go-ahead because everything has to go through the Father, and he gives a per uh, permission to either allow it or to not deny it. All right? He's in charge. How do I know this? Because he wrote it down in his book, right? And 
before the foundations of heaven and earth, he already planned it all out. He knows the end from the beginning. So, the other side that I thought was a bow. And I, immediately I thought of Noah, right? So, in Noah, in Genesis chapter 9, verse 13. Oh, we can go back to 12. Then God said, I'm giving you a sign of my covenant with you and all living creatures for all generations to come. I will place my rainbow in the clouds, sign of my covenant between you and all the earth. Now, I went back into the Hebrew and it says my bow, right? Now, granted, it rained 40 days and 40 nights, so it's completely logical to think it's a rainbow because it doesn't shine before the rain it shines after the rain when the light hits the uh, water molecule molecules in the air okay but God says he puts his bow and I'm thinking hmm well it's a bow of multicolored which makes me think of Jacob's coat but um, so what has been progressing over the last about five years, a certain agenda, right? Of, of, um, that anything goes and, you know, uh, you like who you like and you love who you love and God is love. So it's all good. So, you know, if you don't want to be an Adam and Eve, you can be an Eve and Eve or an Adam and Adam. You know, it's like um, they're blurring the lines. And I, from an artistic point of view, a rainbow is a set of multicolors of the spectrum of light as the light hits it, right? Um, but they blend. They're not solid colors separated. It's a gradation because it's a frequency, it's a light scale. Just like there's a sound scale, there's a light scale of frequencies. And it's frequencies are vibrations. Okay, light has a vib vibration. Uh, sound has a vibration. It's just different wavelengths. Anyways, enough science. Um, <clears throat> so then, I'm going back to Revelations chapter 2. It says, look, there's a white horse, and he was given a bow and a crown. Well, um, what the agenda they are pushing and making wanting everybody to accept because if you say anything bad against it, well, that's hateful. Now, 100 years ago, there was the roaring 20s, right? And anything goes. It, evil repeats itself. And God says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I don't change. You know? So he put up his bow as a promise, a covenant, that he would never flood the earth again. <clears throat> a, another group has taken it and went, na, 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 na. We use it as our symbol. Right? Quite mocking. In fact, you could say it's very hateful towards God. Um, so then I look at this, I'm like, over the last three years, corona, crown, and a bow, right? A rainbow. Both these agendas, and to blur the lines, that's what I mean. When the, the you look at the rainbow and, and all the colors, you know, they're solid, but when they come in contact close to the other one, they blur and they blend. Now, that's what's happening now. It's like character, integrity, honesty, um, truth, right? The man's word is his bond. Well, um, what I see recently is whatever I can get for number one is what's important. And do what feels right. Doesn't mean it's doing right. In fact, sometimes doing right is actually kind of painful and hard. <clears throat> but that's the uh, toughness of being responsible and true to what is right, 
when everybody else says it's wrong or when everybody else says it's wrong to do what is right. And God says they will call evil good and good evil. And he also says in the last days, um, the wicked will do greater wickedness and the righteous will do even more righteousness. So I see we're at the... Um, Four horsemen are riding, and what are they? Uh, to overcome and overcoming, right? So I really think the uh, white horse is, uh, it's not our king and savior, because <clears throat> right after him comes war, and then there's uh, economic collapse with the black horse, and then the pale horse, green horse is uh, famine. You know, and now God allows it. He's using them to, well, he says, uh, if time wasn't cut short, all flesh would be gone off the face of the earth. So he's actually accelerating using these four horsemen to one punish evil two to wake up his people and um, and bring him to him right he knows who's gonna choose and then I saw the fifth seal of going uh, and you can see in Revelation 6 9 which 6 and 9 are, are they're reversed um, letters you flip one up or flip one down you know um, anyways so I when he opened the fifth seal and I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony that they held well, who's that the word of God you mean this which is also referred to in John 1 1 as the word that's the lamb that's our Savior that's our Redeemer. That's who shed his blood. You know, he walked the earth. He healed. He did miracles. Um, he died on the cross. He shed his blood. Right? What? To redeem us to God. Says it in uh, Revelation chapter 5, 9. He's worthy to take up the scroll and to open the seals because he was slain to redeem us to God by your blood. It's right there, right? His blood redeems us. He paid the price. So he's the way, he's the truth. Way to God because he redeems us, right? He's the truth. There's no lie in him. The liar is the other guy, right? And he's eternal life. God grants eternal life through his son. So, and they're saying, for the te testimony, we'll go back to Revelation 6, 10. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then a white robe was given to them, each one of them, and was said to them, that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were was completed. So where did these saints come from? Well, it's pretty, like I said, you got to go back to get context, right? First white horse, to conquer or conquering, or to overcome and overcoming, right? Which, overcoming, kind of makes sense when you think of the crown as corona and the bow as the uh, rainbow thimble of, you know. Anyways, but then what happens after that? War, and that they should kill people. Oh, and then there's the economic collapse, and then there's famine, right? And after that, on the pale horse, Right? Is death in Hades. Well, here you go. Right? When they say that their fellow brethren has to be killed as they were, 
Well, that kind of happens around um, <clears throat> the pale horse, right? He's given power to fourth of the earth to kill with sword, that's war, with hunger, that's famine, with death. Well, that kind of goes with the rest of them. And the beasts of the earth. Now, why are the beasts of the earth going to be attacking people? Um, our cells vibrate. We are all vibrating. Okay? When God's word went out and said, let there be light and let there be life, and when he created Adam, he started a chain of events um, that we are all the seed of, um, well, some of us are the seed of Adam, some are not. We are all the offspring of Eve. <clears throat> That's why he named her Eve. So, I think there's going to be certain um, frequencies, um, and I'll, I'll keep this short. When you watch a movie, you're seeing images flashing in front of you, right? And so you're getting impressions in your mind, images. You're also hearing music, and the music affects your emotions, and... Then there's also all the the sounds, the the sound effects, right? A big explosion, you shake or you get afraid or whatever else, you know. <clears throat> or the actual words that are being spoken. Words have weight, right? Certain dramas, um, you know, uh, will definitely bring people to tears, or of anxious and nervousness. You know, some people like horror films and they get scared and they get an adrenaline rush and you know all of that is by design by the enemy the prince of the power of the air where you're in a movie theater and you're watching the movie the lights shine into your eyes the sound goes into your ears and the sound vibrates your bones how do I know that um I had a friend who was deaf, and she could only dance because she could feel the bass vibrating in her bones. Very interesting. Didn't know that, right? But all of this is by design. This whole world is to get you to be manipulated to do something that is contrary to what God said you, you should do. Um... So I know, I know this because I worked in these industries. Um, so I think the beasts of the earth, and we're seeing it now. They reintroduced some wolves. I think it might have been Yellowstone, but I'm not sure, you know, um, or Yosemite. And they started, there's been recent um, reports of people being attacked. Attacked by bears, attacked by mountain lions, attacked by wolves, you know, more than normal. This is, you know, I think the animals are feeling the frequencies. And if you look around, there's a lot of videos on birds just acting weird. And I've seen it too, you know, that they're not doing their normal patterns. They're not flying correctly. Um, but anyways, so... By what I'm seeing, rider of the rider, rider of the white horse, say that ten times fast, um, <clears throat> is not our king and savior. Now I could be wrong, because he could be out conquering evil and getting rid of it, um, which I pray, I hope so, you know. Um, but I don't see how all these other uh, three riders of horses and all the havoc, chaos, and horrors that they commit on the earth, you know. But they're, we're all, you know, his creation. Not all, of them, not all of us are his children. Um, but if you look at the sixth seal, just to go on. Um, to recap, white horse, conquering, red horse, war, 
Black Horse uh, economic collapse or a change of system to a digital system, which, you know, digital systems are always very secure, so you can't hack those, you know. And then there's death in Hades. And there's a great earthquake, and the sun becomes black as sackcloth, and our hair, and the moon becomes blood, and the stars of heaven fall the earth, you know, from a mighty wind. And the sky recedes as a scroll when it's rolled up and every mountain is moved out of its place. This is a worldwide earthquake. Now, I've been reading the Minor Prophets, Amos and Joel, and they all talk about the sun goes dark. And there's a great earthquake. Um, mount, you know, the, the sun goes black, the moon goes like blood, the stars fall from heaven. You know, mighty solar wind, right? Who knows? But then here's the other thing. The kings and all these people say, hide, they hide in caves, which is dumb, D-U-M-B, and, and in the rocks of the mountains, and tell them, fall on us, and so we don't have to see the face of him who sits on the throne and the wrath of the Lamb. Who's the Lamb? Yeshua, right? But all this is in the Old Testament. The same the same way, right? I think they're all having the same vision. God's showing people over the visions, over and over and over. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. You know, kind of like Noah and the ark. It's coming, it's coming. He got in. The Lord himself shut the door. I think that's what's coming next. He's going to shut the door and say, okay, I'm removing my hand, the restrainer, the Holy Spirit's coming out. You know, repent, acknowledge your sin, ask for forgiveness, you know, and uh, change your ways. Uh, there's no other way. He is the way. Anyways, love you guys. I've blabbered on enough. I hope somebody gets something out of this. Um, can't wait to see you in the next video. Love you guys.